higher education in India is passing through a very critical phase. We are on a big expansion spree, but at the same time, we need to balance the growth because of the simple fact that unlike most countries in the world, India is a very heterogeneous country with uh, enormous uh, uh, demographic diversity. I don't think there's any country in the world which speaks as many languages and dialects which India's Indian population speaks. And I don't think there is any country in the world which speaks so many languages and worships so many deities, eat different types of foods. But then there is also a strata in the society. It's absolutely necessary that any development has to be balanced with equity. When I say equity, you need to have an affirmative action for an inclusive growth of any sector of development. If you talk of education, I would focus my attention on uh, three important uh, elements of the Indian population. The first and the foremost to me is the women population. You see, in India, almost 45% of the population is women population. Unless the women are educated, the country cannot show its real virtues in the global competition. Now, how do we facilitate the uh, education to the Indian women? Now, there are various ways. Number one is our usual policy of compulsory edu uh, primary and secondary education and free education, which is applicable to all the citizens. But I have a feeling that special attention has to be given to women. All said and done, the Indian society is still a traditional society. It lives on certain values and certain beliefs and certain traditions. Most women do not go to schools and colleges because there are no exclusive, not many exclusive schools and colleges for the women. Now this is the issue which we need to address. If I talk of the higher education, the whole country has about 31,000 colleges and of which I think hardly about 1,200 colleges are the women colleges. Let's take the population, student population. Out of the uh, 15 million students going to colleges as per the recent sample survey, only about 30 to 35 percent of them are women. Now, this is an eye opener because we need to touch a 50 percent mark, that is a minimum if we need to promote women education at same terms as for men. Now, a number of uh, measures which are required to be implemented, particularly with reference to the 12th plan are, number one, we should concentrate still on starting of women colleges. I think the 12th plan should start at least 500 women colleges and this should be added every five year plan. The second thing is the entire country has hardly about 10 women universities. Now it is necessary that every state has a women's university because these 10 universities have definitely proved very useful and have largely promoted women education and also introducing such of the curriculum which is of relevance to women besides other conventional uh, subjects of science and technology. I believe that at least 25 more universities exclusively for women should be started in the country and that should be funded fully by the uh, central government. 
The second target group of the Indian society is the scheduled caste, scheduled tribe and backward communities. Now scheduled caste and scheduled tribes do get their share as per the policy of the reservation. But that does alone does not help. There needs to be a proactive action in order to motivate, counsel, bring them at par with students from the coming from the elite and the forward communities. You see, we need not just to provide, we don't need just to provide them an opportunity, but we need to bring them on the board. You bring them, you need to bring them at par in every respect. I am not wrong, even we have to bring them uh, at par with their lifestyle in the townships, in the metropolis, and the advanced societies. Now, this is very important. Backward communities are plenty in number. The reservation to backward communities recently in the ad admission to the uh, institutions has certainly helped. And probably we need to have the same policy as that of the scheduled caste to proactively promote education amongst the backward communities. The third important element which I feel is that we need to bridge the rural and urban gap. We can't forget that 70% of the population is in the rural areas. And I'm not wrong to say that enormous talent is just hidden in the rural areas because of lack of exposure and lack of opportunities. If we start bridging this gap between the rural and the urban by spreading our educational institutions, not necessarily concentrated in the uh, metropolis, but to spread them across the country, go into the far, uh, far off places, the backward places, the northeast, the tribal areas and spread them out so that they get an opportunity to get into the mainstream of mainstream of higher education. Of course, these are the three elements, but I think in addition to that, there is another very important uh, target group, which is the minorities of the country. The minorities, the, essentially the Muslims, the Christians, the Buddhists, the Sikhs, they all put together, constitute almost um, 15 to 18 percent of the population. Now, if minorities are left out from the mainstream, and if they are not the beneficiaries of the main growth of the country's uh, progress uh, in higher education, uh, it's, I'm afraid uh, it's very dangerous uh, for the nation as such. And if they are taken along, and then it's going to tremendously add to the value, not just to the value, but the overall accomplishments of the nation. So this is where we need to balance the planning of uh, higher education in the coming uh, five-year, twelfth five-year plan.